Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So this past weekend was actually my birthday. <laughs> this past weekend I turned 40 and let me tell you guys, 40 sounds much older than 30. <laughs> I like the sound of being in my 30s more than the sound of being in my 40s, but it is what it is. But anyways, so this past weekend, even though it was my birthday weekend and I said that I was not going to take any events, I ended up taking one. So this event planner that I work with frequently, she came to me and asked me for some balloons for a bar mitzvah, so I didn't wanna turn her down. I'm like, it's okay, I can take one event. So for this bar mitzvah, I ended up providing a bunch of balloons, and then I also provided some streamer decorations, okay? So let's get into the setup, and then make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video because I do have some lessons learned for you guys, all right? So, let's get started.
All right, guys. So that was the bar mitzvah. Let me know in the comments, what did you think of the balloons? So let me tell you, I want to get into the lessons learned immediately. So there was one big lesson that I learned from this event. So with this setup, we had all day. So the bar mitzvah service didn't start until about 4 to 4.30 p.m. And they said that we can get into the synagogue at like 8.30 in the morning. So my thinking was, since it was my birthday weekend, I'm thinking like, I'm gonna get in there early, I'm gonna set up all of my balloons, and then I'm gonna get out of there, right? So I wanted to be one of the first vendors into the synagogue to set up, and then I wanted to be out of there before everybody else got in there. And the thing was, with this bar mitzvah, there was a lot of vendors. So there was probably like 10 vendors that were in and out of the synagogue going to be setting up, right? So I wanted to be the first person. Now, on the day of the event, I was actually running a little bit late, but I knew that I had plenty of time, so I wasn't stressed about it. So when I ended up getting to the synagogue, there were other vendors who were already in the room. And the thing was, guys, they were bringing stuff in and out, in and out of that room. And where I was supposed to be setting up, the entryway where I was supposed to be setting up, there were people coming in and out, in and out, in and out. So I'm really happy that I didn't get there first because if I would have set up my balloons while people were trying to load in and out, in and out, they would have just messed up the balloons, okay? So what I learned from this event is that unfortunately, I cannot be one of the first vendors in there, right? So when it comes to balloon decorations, when it comes to balloon garlands being on the entryway, right? If I'm gonna be putting balloons in a busy area where people are loading in and out, in and out, then unfortunately I can't be one of the first vendors. I actually have to be one of the last vendors in there. So that's one big thing that I learned from this event is that if I'm gonna be setting up balloons on an entryway, then I need to make sure that everything is set up and everything else is loaded and that there's not a bunch of traffic coming in and out of the door that I'm trying to set up in front of. Because what ended up happening was after I set up the balloons, there was somebody who came in with a couch and they needed to bring the couch in the same entryway that I had just set up the balloons. And unfortunately, they knocked some of the balloons over, right? Another lesson learned from this event is that when I'm working with an event planner who's creating the floor plan, I need to be more proactive in letting them know how much space I'm gonna need for my balloon garlands, right? Because most event planners are not gonna know that unless they work with balloons. So for this event, my event planner that I was working with, she wanted me to put balloons around the entryway, okay? So I ended up putting balloons down both sides of the entryway. But on one side, there was this shelf. There was this big black shelf that had cubbies in it. And that's where they ended up putting the favors. A really, really cute idea. However, that cubby, that shelf, made it really, really hard for me to put my balloons next to it because I didn't have a lot of space. So it took me a long time to shape my balloon garland because I had to really maneuver the balloons and figure out how to fit my balloons next to this big shelf. I just didn't have enough space. And I did tell the event planner that I would do the best that I could because I told her, I'm like, I don't have enough space for my big balloons, right? When you're using 24 inch and 36 inch balloons, you need space for those. 
So I did the best that I could. And of course the event planner, she loved it. But for me, I'm thinking next time I need to be more proactive and I need to tell the event planner, I'm gonna need at least three to four feet, right? For my balloon garland so that I can have the space that I need to be able to create you know, a beautiful shape and a beautiful balloon decoration for the event. My last lesson learned for this event is that I'm going to have to be more proactive in letting my clients know and the event planners that I work with, I have to let them know that if they put balloons next to a door or next to a vent or in a really hot room, then the balloons are going to oxidize. That means they're going to lose their shine and they may start to lose their color. So with this event, I set up in two places. I set up upstairs and I set up downstairs. So the in the upstairs area, there was a door right next to where I set up the balloons. And I could tell that those balloons were starting to oxidize because it was hot outside and people kept opening and shutting, opening and shutting the door. And then also downstairs, when I was setting up those balloon garlands in the entryway, it was really hot downstairs because people were loading and unloading, loading and unloading. So the balloons started to oxidize. That's actually the first time that that happened to me in a while because usually there's air conditioning on, right? It's not so hot indoors, but it was really hot downstairs. And I'm not sure, I tried to zoom in so you guys could see, but those balloons did start to oxidize. So I just wanna cover myself, you know, just in case I get a client or an event planner who says, you know, why aren't the balloons shiny? You know, what happened? I just wanna cover myself and let them know you know, what will happen if you have the balloons in a hot area, if you have the balloons in a hot room, or if you have them next to a window or a door, they will lose their shininess. All right, guys. So those were the lessons that I had for you. If you have any questions on the balloon colors that I use, I'm gonna make sure I put that in the description of this video. If you guys have any questions on those streamers, this was actually the first time that I used streamers with my balloon decorations, so I am learning, okay? I definitely wanna try it again, and then I'll make a video and kinda of talk you through it. I'm not sure if the way that I did it this time is the best way, so I'm gonna be experimenting and trying different things, and I'll definitely you know, record myself so that you guys can see what I'm doing, all right? If you guys have any other questions, please let me know and I'll see you in my next video.